Thank you, my friends. Thank you, dear colleagues. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here for the opening of this uh, great uh, joint adventure. And uh, let me uh, also say that uh, uh, it's a pleasure everywhere I can be with my dual identity of both uh, scientist and politician now. And this is one of these uh, such uh, occasions. Since this is a science event, but it's also an institutional event in which the politics is, of course, uh, involved. And uh, on a fascinating topic, of course. Uh, let us uh, talk about uh, artificial intelligence. We uh, hear that the, that the phrase artificial intelligence was divided in the 50s by uh, McCarthy and uh, Minsky as uh, the name for a program which was uh, about uh, putting in algorithm uh, our uh, human intelligence. One first thing which is uh, amazing when you hear about this is uh, how naive, in a way, they were, the people in those days, about how you can understand uh, human intelligence. And even now, I mean, uh, 60 years later, we are nowhere near a good understanding of how it really works. The other thing is how daring they were, uh, you know, these people, no limits, let's go, very confident. And uh, this was a trademark, certainly, of uh, one of these periods in which it was seen as the fast rise of uh, algorithmic science would lead to a revolution. And as we know, it was clear in uh, AI that it's a subject in which periods of uh, strong uh, hope alternated with periods of uh, depression. Currently, we are in a period of very strong hope. We think for a number of reasons that this will not be followed by uh, depression, but we always have to be careful and remember what uh, happened in the past. Let me uh, talk about my first uh, exposition to the concept of uh, artificial intelligence. This was in the books by uh, Douglas Hofstadter in the 80s, which uh, were among my uh, favorite books uh, when I was a teenager. I guess many of you around also read some of the uh, Hofstadter books. Uh, it is actually there that I heard for the first time about uh, Alan Turing. The famous uh, biography uh, had just been uh, out, Alan Turing, the uh, Enigma. And, uh, the, and uh, in the Hofstadter book was one of the first to give to a broad audience an account of this uh, biography. And I was reading this and it was like, it was too good to be true. There was this man who had uh, made scientific revolution, almost invented uh, computer science by his own, almost saved the world by his own. It looked like if it was a story taken out from a novel, eh? but it was, a, it was a true story. And I thought, how is it that I never heard of this, uh, of this guy? And uh, uh, it was fascinating the way that Hofstadter described the problems and uh, uh, challenges of artificial intelligence. And there were these, for the first time, I could see these little programs in Lisp with these uh, amazing number of uh, brackets that you have to close at the end of the lines or whatever. And the book was uh, all uh, about questions of meaning, sense, uh, recursivity, whatever, which made a very lasting impression of me, certainly. Uh, was a strong incentive for pursuing a higher career in mathematics. However, you know what it's like. You start in this direction and then you change direction and change again and so on. When I entered the uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure, by the way, my strong field was in algebra. And a couple of years later, algebra was the field that I understood the least and was definitely an analyst. And then I went on to mathematical physics, even though I had not been a great student in physics. You never know the direction in which you are going to, going to go. So I made my career in partial differential equations, problems of uh, gases and plasmas. From gas, I uh, studied problems related to optimization. I was very much involved in the so-called optimal transport problem, which has this very long history uh, in which you try to transport one um, how you transport some distribution of mass from one stage to another stage, paying the least amount possible of uh, energy. This problem, incidentally, was the um, motivation for my uh, only long-term stay in the UK. This was a four-month stay in 2000, uh, when was it? Um, uh, I guess 2003, in uh, Reading on the invitation of a researcher in the uh, medium-term uh, uh, weather forecasts on the EMWS. Uh, 
have something in Reading, beautiful center, top of the world in uh, the, the, some of the uh, weather forecastings. And this is because this optimal transport problem does occur in some problems of uh, meteorology. And uh, it's one of these examples of how pervasive and uh, unexpected can a mathematical technique be when it appears here and there. So this was my career anyway related to mathematical physics and this is where I got the Fields Medal in particular for my studies of stability of the gas and uh, plasmas which are two quite distinct uh, problems. And uh, let me say that uh, artificial intelligence uh, in those years was kind of out of my uh, radar and even when one of my collaborators, Yann Olivier, announced uh, that he would change field from the optimal transport and so on stuff to go into uh, artificial intelligence, I kind of warned him, you know, maybe uh, the subject uh, does not have as many applications as uh, should be, you know, maybe artificial intelligence uh, is uh, a bit too fuzzy, whatever. Gosh, how wrong I was. But you know, very few people had expected that it would take such a turn, the artificial intelligence, as we have seen in the past uh, few years. And almost nobody had expected that it would become the talk of the day, that you would hear the politicians almost daily talk about artificial intelligence, etc. And it was the change of uh, techniques which was uh, underway. The uh, old techniques uh, such that were described in the book by Hofstadter now were kind of put on the side. There were new techniques based on statistics. There were new kind of uh, strategies which turned out to be uh, remarkably uh, successful. And uh, not only I could see that then a few years later applications started uh, flowing, but uh, even a couple of years later when I turned to go into politics for various reasons, it was the first mission which was assigned to me, this uh, task force to uh, draft the French strategy for artificial intelligence. Let us say that this is a problem in which UK was ahead of us, uh, in the sense that the uh, UK strategy had been uh, devised and worked on, and now it's uh, important that in France we take this turn also. Let us also say that this, uh, there have been a number of missions and strategies around the world in the past few years, converging in many respects. In our case, uh, we insisted very much on the idea of having a broad picture, which would be not only about legal aspects, but also cultural, administrative, whatever. And we insisted very much, we will insist when we uh, get back to the government, about uh, the practical, pragmatic uh, start of the uh, action, like how to go from point A to point B, which action to do which which ministry, uh, <coughs> decided that we would work with each and every ministry uh, to see what actions would be taken and uh, so on. Let me uh, also say that uh, uh, it was remarkable to see the extraordinary enthusiasm that there was for so from the society. We received hundreds of spontaneous contributions before we set up an official platform. After we set up an official platform, it contributions flowed by the thousands. We interviewed hundreds of people coming from all sectors, and it was uh, remarkable the amount of um, enthusiasm that they had in sharing their uh, views in there. And um, I would say that maybe this is one of the first uh, remarkable facts about artificial intelligence, how it is ubiquitous, pervasive, so that each and every sector feel that it is concerned. Many of them frightened, some of them with uh, huge hopes, but it's a topic through which it was possible to meet the whole of society in some sense. At personal level, for me as head of the mission, it was fascinating to meet all these various uh, specialties. And let me also say that it's another thing that is very special with AI, that it's a field that will not be left only to the specialists. Some people say maybe it's a revolution that is comparable to uh, atomic uh, bomb or whatever, but it's very different in the sense that the debate about atomic bomb stayed within a few experts and politicians while the debate about uh, artificial intelligence is with everybody and everybody in a sense uh, has to, some contribution uh, to make. And then uh, also it's different from the start of the digital revolution because first the start of digital revolution was about finding universal tools that would apply to everybody. Let's, let's bring internet, the same internet to everybody in the world. 
if be there uh, whether they be lawyers or medical doctors or uh, uh, policemen it will be the same internet but for artificial intelligence these will be quite different tools and declinations and it's uh, interesting to see that all sectors will be uh, involved uh, let me also say that it's uh, amazing to see how much it has changed the public discourse so itself has changed, I've seen, we've seen uh, uh, the focus on artificial intelligence being first on the ontology, then uh, going to the statistics, now in the reinforcement, and uh, now in uh, other variants and so on. There were the, the, the uh, neural networks revolution, etc. Uh, it is uh, amazing to see also how it changed the public discourse about economy, so that every economic strategy now and every big company feels compelled to put the keywords artificial intelligence in their report and strategy and to explain how they will uh, address this. It has also uh, changed the debate about the geopolitics and now every politician is, uh, has to have a view of which are the countries in which uh, positioning themselves, what is the China strategy, the American strategy, the Canadian strategy, the Israel strategy, the European strategy, whatever. So it's a, it's a, it's a big change in this also. It has also uh, changed, the, it is also coming in the culture, even though it is a bit disappointing to see how we are uh, still in the culture sticking to a small number of paradigms about the new uh, scenarios of artificial intelligence and somehow still trapped in the uh, 2001 uh, Space Odyssey uh, or a few, a few other archetypes or, you know, matrix and a few other archetypes uh, about the future of AI. And it's important that new uh, myths emerge, new um, uh, culture or things emerge about this. I was um, maybe last year together with Jérôme actually involved in debate uh, at a public occasion at uh, the movie in which we were um, uh, showing movie. I think it was her. And uh, this was the start of a debate about what can occur in the human uh, algorithm interaction. It's important we get into more of these cultural reference points. Uh, we know also that um, artificial intelligence will change the uh, debate and is changing the debate about industry, data, education and training, ethics, environment, research, of course. But uh, it's also a way through the artificial intelligence development to know more about us. And when I say about us, it's about us humans. We are discovering that the human intelligence and the artificial intelligence are so different that we understand so little about us that some people in the neurosciences are starting to make the connection between the neural networks and our intelligence and getting some interesting stuff about it. Uh, we are also discovering some new facts about our relation to the technology, about our fears, about uh, our relation to the work and things like this. And also about us society, to quote just one example, the auditions in the research sector were very uh, tough on me uh, as a uh, researcher to see how much our own research system in France was suffering from internal problems that uh, the, some of the private uh, big uh, major companies have been very clever at solving in their uh, respective contexts and that made us universities, for instance, less competitive. And so from the observation of these actors, we are uh, getting more knowledge about us and then we will progress. Last but not least, uh, there are all these new uh, scientific questions which are coming out from the field and which are fascinating. First, it was a blow for me when I saw that some of my own techniques were now being applied in some uh, artificial intelligence problems and that Last year, 2017, maybe half a dozen papers appeared in which some of my books were put as prominent reference as a tool to recast the problem of so-called generative adversarial networks training into the framework of optimal transport in which I had worked for a long time. As I was telling yesterday in the conference, I will make sure that I will teach this stuff next year so that I can understand better what has been going on with my uh, techniques. Uh, my, I say my, but it's the techniques of the community on which, uh, on which I worked. Uh, I also, also, there is all this fascinating research about problems of explainability and how to understand which are the parameters on which an algorithm is uh, going to base its uh, decisions. There are also all the problem of putting more structure, geometry, and meaning into the field and understanding, goddammit, 
why it is that this or that algorithm works so well. You know, five years ago, some of the best experts in computer science in France, they would tell you, you know, neural networks, they don't work. We have tried them for many decades, they just don't work. And now they say, yes, they work, they work. We don't understand why they work, but they work. And it's uh, fascinating to see that there is this, so it's kind of a big mystery, big challenge. I can see in this a taste of the same, um, a few years ago when Monte Carlo Markov chain methods were out and were doing marvels, and people were saying they are so efficient, but we don't understand why they are so efficient. And the best experts in the world Percy Diaconis and the others would tell us, God, it's such a challenge to understand why these methods work so well, unexpectedly well. And here probably it's uh, the same kind of thing, even much more uh, challenging maybe. And uh, some of the uh, books and articles about this are very challenging. One of the books which I read recently that uh, certainly some of you read, I don't know what you thought about it, is the book by uh, Les Valiant, probably approximately uh, correct in which some fascinating connections are drawn very speculative way about the emergence of structures, making parallel in particular with the problem of evolution of species, which is, uh, was one of the problems that fascinated me most as a kid. How is it that you explain the emergence of structure? How is it that we still don't have any quantitative theory of um, uh, evolution of species, how much they uh, evolve, how it is that evolution was so efficient that it seems unreasonable and so on. And he, uh, through some of the, some daring concepts, partly obscure, partly for sure very deep, uh, he suggests that there is a common problem of uh, emerging uh, structures through what he will call the uh, ecorhythms and so on. I am sure that uh, the more, most uh, exciting is to come and that the most unexpected, certainly, at least from scientific uh, point of view, is to come. And uh, it is with these uh, speculative and hopeful words that I will uh, leave the floor to the uh, next uh, uh, speaker, Jérôme. Thank you.